Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Arena for our Great British Rookie Championships of 2023. You are going to see four high octane disciplines with the saws and the axes from some of our up and coming British talent who are battling out for the Rookie Championships and that top prize. First place, who's it going to go to? Now, it's our last show here of the afternoon, of the year in fact, and your participation is vital. So we want to hear some noise from you out in the crowd. Are you ready for this? Oh, that's eight of you. I think you're ready for David Jason. Are you ready for some timber sports? Thank you so much. Right. We need to be a safe event. We need to be a controlled event and we need a judge to do that. So please welcome all the way from the Netherlands, Mr. Bart Janssen. Okay, so Bart is going to ensure the smooth running of this event, make sure all our athletes get through the wood safely. And just to make doubly, triply sure, we have Bart's son in the truck, our video referee, our video judge, Jules Janssen. There he is. Just finished playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Ready to go. Get some round of applause as well from, from a few people there. Nice to see. Thank you very much. Now... We need the wood, we need the equipment, and of course, we need our rookies. So please welcome onto the stage here at Malvern. First up, tree surgeon from Essex, Theo Richmond. Come on, make some noise for Theo. Next up, he's a forester from Powys in Wales, Rowan Luxton. We've got the Rowan fan club in as well. From Knighton in Wales, a slaughterhouse worker, Memphis Clements. Next from Hampshire, our forester, Max Wright. From Croydon, but studying in Nottingham, welcome to our stage, Lorcan O'Burn. Next up, the machine mechanic from Surrey, Dominic Bell. Another one from the hotbed of Timber Sports, Knighton in Wales, our agricultural engineer, Zach Powell. Another proud Welshman from Clandui in Wales, it's a farmer, Jake Bufton. Next up, he's a classic VW enthusiast, our runner-up from last year, from Leighton in Wales, Joe Grease. <laughs> Next up, he's a local lad from Martley in Worcestershire, third last year, please welcome on Luke Bray. And finally, from Knighton in Wales, our reigning champion, it's Jack the Hammer Morris. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, these are your athletes ready to go with our four disciplines for the Rookie Championship. And who better to talk us through it Paint the pictures as we're going along is our resident expert all the way from Canada, Mr. Troy Mannering. Welcome, Troy. Thank you very much, Alex. Yes, indeed, we do have a pack of ready-to-go rookies here for the British Rookie Championship 2023. We are streaming live to you now, and we are going to check out, before we get the action going, what our event format looks like. Let's take a look at that right now. The Steel Timber Sports Rookie Competition. All athletes will compete in four disciplines. The maximum points awarded for each discipline result from the number of participating athletes. The first discipline is the stock saw. The fastest athlete will receive points equal to the total number of athletes competing down to one point for the last place in each discipline. The second event is the standing block chop. Points remain the same, awarded based on times, and as with all events, any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. 
As the third discipline, every competitor will need to show their skill in the single buck. And in the underhand chop, it's the athlete's last chance to claim valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest point total wins the competition. Okay, let's get on with some sport. The first one is the stock saw, one of the most popular chainsaws in the steel range. Our competitors are gonna to race to cut through two cookies, but let's find out a little bit more. The steel MS661 CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark, one downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. All right, folks, this is our stock saw, and this is the start list for this discipline. Riding solo first up, is gonna be Dominic Bell, our machine mechanic from Surrey. And then we'll have five subsequent heats involving each of our rookies vying for that title. We should also point out, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this is not a knockout system here. This is about a point system. So each time the athletes get on stage, whether they be alone like Dominic here, or whether they be in a head-to-head -head heat, they are, they are vying for the fastest time possible on the tool and discipline to try and get the most points throughout four rounds of cutting and sawing here. Dominic just making the final last checks on the block. You saw he made a mark there, and now he'll warm up his saw. This is a hot start for the stock saw, okay. so it will be running at the Warm start of racing. <laughs> No messing around for Dominic, he wants to race. Let's go. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Good pickup standing straight upright. Dominic has a different style. Digging the front of the bar down, trying to find the upcut line. Looks good so far. It's a nice thin cookie, thin to win. And that's the way we like to see it done. That's a personal best for Dominic with a 14.45. Very well done right off the hop by Dominic. And we do have, I believe, five brand new rookies in the mix this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the cut's good. Yes, Troy, we're always adding to our rookies. And if people out in the audience like what they see, please do let our event staff know and we can sign you up for some of our training camps taking place over the summer. Taking a look back at the slow-mo on the transition to the upcut, Dominic had to reposition, didn't really feel comfortable with the way it was on the upcut. It had a bit of an angle, but it was a nice thin cookie and that's exactly what we like to see because it left him a lot of space inside those 10 centimeter marks to be able to make adjustments if something untoward happened, but he had two good cookies on the deck. The time counts, and we have our first numbers on the board as our next heat gets ready to come up. All right, here we go, heat two. 19-year-old Rowan Luxton and 24-year-old Luke Bray. Saw Luke Bray competing here last year, looking very good, so one of those guys that could well be working towards putting a little bit of pressure on our reigning champion, Jack Morris. Jack Morris, by the way, holds the stock saw record for this season for the rookies. He achieved that at the Rookie Academy earlier on in the year, even 10. So that's the number a lot of these guys are gonna be aiming for. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your saw. We 
you've noticed we've had good wood all weekend long, so it's not that far outside of the box to think that a record might fall here. Let's see. Athlete, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Very nice start by both of these guys. Looks to then Bray cutting well. Bray looks to be smooth through the down cut. Hardly any swing on the transition by Luke Bray on the up cut. Just passing the 11 second mark, but that's a nice time by Luke Bray. And a personal best for both of these gentlemen. Nicely done. Rowan Luxton with a 13-6-1. Luke Bray with a 12.30. Now the question is, do we have any cut lines? Do we have two good cookies? Let's find out. Ooh, I think we might have a cut line there by Rowan Luxton. We're going to wait and see what our judge Bart Janssen says when they come up to the decision zone at the front of the stage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one. Unfortunately, DQ, cut the line, stand two, is good. All right, so Rowan Luxton had a bit of a thick cookie on that second cut. Looks like he went a little bit too far inside and cut over the line. And this is the reason for the DQ, but it was a beautiful start by both of these guys. Very quick to pick up that saw, get it running. That was a decent cookie right there from Luke Bray. And uh, you can see that second cookie. Oh, excuse me, that's the first cookie from Rowan. Massive, didn't give him a lot of space to make that second cut on the upcut. And here we see Luke Bray's upcut, nice and clean, pretty thick cookie, but he stayed away from the line, Alex. Yeah, tasty, personal best as well for Luke. And this is a theme we've seen throughout today, both starting off here in the rookies, Troy, and with our women this morning, personal records starting to fall. Yes. Heat three, Jake Bufton and Memphis Clements. Now, I, I don't know if it's because there's just too many letters in his name for our uh, little info sheet, but it said Memph there. I don't know if that's how he uh, likes to be referred to. I think I'm going to stick with Memphis, though, quite honestly. Yeah, he does work in a slaughterhouse, it so does, I wouldn't uh... cross his path. <laughs> Jake Bufton, no stranger to competition here. Memphis, Memphis Clements came up on stage and he looked like uh, a man that meant business. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your soul. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Very nice start. Ooh, that is a cutout right there by Jake Bufton. That's going to cost him time. Memphis Clemens is struggling with that upcut, putting a little bit too much pressure on the saw. And that's a slow one. 16.42 is a personal best. Jake Bufton had to go back and cut again. Got to watch that line. And he's come real close to the line on the uh, third cookie he had to cut there. Mm, might have even been four cookies, 17.62 for Jake on that one. So let's see what the judge says. <laughs> yeah, a poquito. Came pretty close as the guys will come to the front of the stage in our decision zone. And you can see that wedge, it's almost like a wedge. And that's uh, a pretty rough situation because if you have a wedge cut, it means you're cutting at an angle and you can see there, it comes very close to the line. That's why Bart's getting down right on his knees and looking closely to see if it's cut over the line. Here we go with the decision. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one. DQ, cut the line, stand two, okay. So Memphis Clements with a good time in the books. Unfortunately for Jake Bufton, he cut over the line and we'll have a look back and just see what happened with his cuts. So on the left-hand side of your screen, it looked like he started out nice and clean, but there was a bit of an angle on his saw as he entered the wood, and you could see he actually cuts out of the block. Well, we don't see it now, unfortunately. And there is a little bit of indecision by Memphis as he struggled to get that second cut. And here's the angle I was talking about. That's another cookie, that's a cutout, and then goes back in to try and Get an additional cut. That was the final cut there for Memphis coming close to the line at the top and right here at the bottom of the cut, or maybe yeah, I think it was at the top of the cut is where he cut over the line. So he just, he had too much going on in that one as we head to our next heat in Stock Saw. 
All right, Heat 4. I'm expecting big things this year from Theo Richmond. And he is on the stand with our reigning champion, Jack Morris. Yeah, Troy, we saw uh, Theo in demonstration over the weekend and uh, in some of the axe events. He was absolutely on form. Yeah, he was looking great out there. He came up to do uh, a couple of demos and uh, yeah, he showed that he's got some skills, absolutely. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your soul. Now, as I mentioned, Jack Morris holds the record for this season for British rookies with a 10 second even cut. And at he the achieved this at ready. the Rookie Academy. Stand Here we go. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, Theo with a really nice, good start. He's got a clean cut going on there. He's going to give Jack a run for his money as a transition for Jack Morris. Looks pretty good on the up cut. It's Theo, personal best, 12.59. Jack Morris, a 13.34. So Theo Richmond continuing to impress this weekend. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, board girls are good. All right, so at the moment, Luke Bray holds the top spot in Stocksaw with a 12.22 personal best. In second place, Theo Richmond with a 12.42, also a personal best as we take a look back at the start. This is a really nice thin cookie to start the cutoff, and that made it a quick start for him. Also a thin cookie there for... Jack Morris, but the second cookie was a little bit thicker for both of these guys, and you can see there, still a nice cut though by Theo, and also by Jack, but Theo was just a hair faster by virtue of that first cut, although he did start to angle that saw and come close to the line at the top. So uh, we have four more athletes to perform. Two of which are in Heat 5 here. You'll see Joe Grease, the runner-up from last year, on the stage with Max Wright, looking for Max Power. Max Power. It'll be his first time competing in a rookie championship. So a uh, little bit of nerves. I talked to him earlier on in the uh, catering area, and he's like, yeah, a little bit nervous, but uh, it's calming down as we get closer to the situation. So hopefully he is now nerves-free and just focused. And he said in his uh, bio and his notes before this, Max, that his parents and his brother let, let him make a mess of his garden lawn with the amount of wood chip <laughs> that he's chucking around. So he's saying a big thanks to them for letting him crack on with his training. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your saw. Joe Grease insisting on a final push on that At saw to make it really ready. hot. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Very nice start by Joe Grease. Holds that engine up high. Thick cookie, though. He's got to be careful on the transition. He's got a very thin second cut, though, and that's looking good for Joe Grease. An 11 8 1. Wow, he's super consistent. Staying in the 11 range. But he came close to a cutout there, and uh, it's going to be a big-time inspection there. Oh, it's very, very thin at the top. Oh. And we do have a yellow flag on the play. We'll find out what that's all about. It could be because of the cutout, but I think a yellow flag usually indicates that there's something to do with how the saw was placed, if it was still running. But we'll find out from our judge as he comes out to the decision zone. So we are in the midst of a video check with Jules Janssen in the truck. Scouring the footage. Nervous wait now for Joe Grease to see if his cut makes the cut. 
I'm just wondering uh, what the reason for the video check is. It could be like a jump cut, maybe a jump start. No, we'll see. It's a lot of guesstimating going on here. Fingers crossed for both of these guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand two is good. Stand one, we checked the video, it was very, very thin. But both cuts are good. That's the news we want. <laughs> Troy, you always say thin to win. Thin to win, and boy, Joe Grease cut it real <laughs> thin there. Let's take a look back. It was the angle on the upcut that was the issue. So he actually did a fairly thick first cookie, and you can see he digs in with the front of the bar, keeps the engine or the motor of the saw in place, but this is where the angle played a role. So he started fairly wide at the bottom and ended fairly thin at the top, and it was really about this final bit, and there you see Max. Oh, that's Joe's cut, excuse me. So maybe it was the first cut. Max looked good and clean through the whole thing, though. Two good cookies on the deck. Nice job from him. So he's showing well in his first time out. And Joe Grease, by the way, uh, he managed to get his personal best after adjustment. They do sometimes do adjustments in competition control. He's got an 11.65 and is at the top of the stocks are results. Okay, final heat of our first discipline of the afternoon, the stock saw. Zach Powell and Lorcan O'Burn. Zach Powell with the best hat in the house today. Hopefully you'll see it later on during the uh, presentations on stage. We have to apologize to Lorcan because uh, his name is spelled incorrectly on the graphics. He's definitely an O'Burn. Okay, gentlemen. Warm up your saw. Logan O'Byrne looking very comfortable with the saw in hand. We know Zach Powell can Athletes cut. Athletes ready! Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Wow, that was fast by O'Byrne. He got up there quick. Zach Powell, different style here. High on the engine, deep with the blade and the bar. Oh, we got a cutout by O'Byrne. Hopefully he notices that and cuts a third. Oh, he didn't see it. He didn't see it. Oh, and, and now, now he's, he's just noticed. noticing it. He's already put the saw down and shut it off. That means it is out for him. That's going to be a DQ, unfortunately. And it's a clear incomplete cookie because we saw it from over here. He cut out at the bottom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one, it's good. Stand two, DQ, incomplete disc. Fair play as the guys leave the stage. Good job by both of them, unfortunately. Just a little bit uh, too much gumption on that uh, second cut for O'Byrne. Let's take a look at this again. You can see there just a little bit too much pressure by Zach on the up and he felt this chain starting to slow down and readjusted and uh, kept it going. And here is where the cutout happened on the transition to the up cuts. Difficult because you're looking down the log. So when it happens down in that position, you don't actually see it. And he only noticed it after he put the saw down and saw the cookie. But then by then it was just too late. So three DQs, one incomplete cookie and two cuts over the line. And these are things that these guys will learn, and it happens to even the best in the world. You know, the, the more you try and get to the edge of that cliff, the more times you're going to slip and fall off, and that's just part of the process. Okay, these are the standings after the first event, the stock saw. You'll see our reigning champ, Jack Morris, with work to do. He lies in fifth place with seven points. Max Wright, PB on the board, he gets eight points, and you see the PBs just racking up. From third onwards, Theo Richmond, great time, 12.42, that gets him nine points. Luke Bray, second place, he gets 10 points. And the full fat, 11 points, goes to Joe Grease. 
And that will be the standings at this point with one discipline out of the way. But we do have three more disciplines to go. And as I mentioned off the start of the show, it is about gaining as many points as possible with good fast runs. The next discipline coming up is the standing block chop. Now this is a difficult chopping event. So we're going to see these guys hitting with the axe, making it look like they're felling a tree. You'll find out more about that a bit later on, but I do think we have a little bit of a video coming up, we don't do, we? do, yeah. Now, Lumberjack Sports came to this country, Great Britain, in 1966, but we're going to take a look back even further and see how timber sports, the original extreme sports, came to be. Expert woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Right? An axeman's gathering. Troy, we have our next event and it's time to start unsheathing some axes. These things are so sharp that even we could get through the hairs on your hairy legs, couldn't we? With these <laughs> you can shave with these axes, they're so sharp. Let's have a look now at the axes and our next discipline, the standing block chop, what it's all about. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Standing Block Chop At the Standing Block Chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. Right, let's take a look at the start list for this Standing Block Chop now. It's a random draw, of course, Troy, so... Uh, mm -hmm. You don't know where you're going to stand when it comes to the disciplines. Heat one, Zach Powell. Heat two will be Theo Richmond against Joe Grice. Heat three, Jake Bufton and Luke Bray. Heat four, we will have Rowan Luxton and Jack Morris. Now you notice this list is a bit shorter than the list we had previously and there's a reason behind that. Uh, we have four athletes that have not had enough time to really become proficient with the standing block chop. There are a certain number of uh, tests that they have to go through in order to make sure that they can cut this safely and it's not only for their own safety but it's for the safety of the crew on the deck. So we have four guys that will not be cutting the standing block chop with us today but they will be back for the other two disciplines with the single buck and the underhand chop. So we now take this opportunity to welcome onto the stage, Zach Powell. Zach Powell cutting all by his lonesome up there today. So you'll see him mark the deck there with the wax pen. Uh, what that gives him is a guidelines as to where he wants to have his feet without really having to think too much about positioning. He just wants to focus on the cutting and chopping with that axe and making sure he's clean through that block. Okay. Athlete, Athlete ready. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right. Two drivers from down low, two drivers on, from on high, making small adjustments as he goes along, trying to get through there as quickly as possible. 
Accuracy is fast, so you want to try and be as accurate as possible. He's got a lot of power though, so that helps him where the accuracy isn't there. And you can see it's a, bitty, a pretty steppy block, but he's doing well because he's moved over to the other side at about the 25 second mark. And he's got a nice deep cut through the first side, chipping out well. That's a deep driver right there though that got a little bit out of line from where he wanted it to go. And he really wants to make sure these are accurate so he can get those chips away. Now they start to fall. And you can see it's starting to wiggle a little bit there. And this power is gonna play a good role for him as he can Drive one or two more to get the top of that block off. Let's see if he's got it. Oh, it's just hanging on. You can see it wiggling and waggling there. It's just a couple of threads holding it down. And it's a 56.13 for Zach Powell and a personal best, which is what we like to see. That means improvement is happening along the way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. It gets good. <laughs> we should also point out, and uh, we'll move over to slow mo here. But what you don't see in the background is our crew uh, for the stage to make sure that all of those chips and blocks and sawdust that comes off of these various events get cleaned up and tidied away, so that it's a safe environment for our athletes to participate. And you can see pretty steppy block there, a little bit of salad on the first side but uh, by virtue of having just a ton of power in his drivers, he was able to get in nice and tight. And some nice clean cuts on the second side though. The second side was a bit of an improvement for him and there you saw that final driver and uh, he sent that block out into left field, Alex. Yeah, great action here in Malvern. Heat two comes next, the standing block shot. We see Theo Richmond, great performance in the stock saw alongside Joe Grise. So once this uh, set of heats is through, we'll take a look at their standings as well as the overall standings and just give you an idea of how these points are allotted through the rounds and how these guys will be moving up. A couple of practicing swings there from Joe Grise. And Theo Richmond inspecting his block. Okay. Giving us a shake. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Both these athletes, Troy, will be eyeing up a podium finish. And Joe Grice off to an absolute flyer here. Yeah, he is hammering away at that block. There's no love lost between that wood and Joe Grice. Theo Richmond, however, is. Not that much different. He's Both no of them. slouch either. No, at all. He's having trouble getting that axe out as he hops around to the other side like a jackrabbit. And these guys are on point with each other. Let's see who manages to get through that block first. Couple of flat cuts there by Joe Grise. Theo Richmond getting close to it, but I think it might be Joe Grise getting it first with a 32.78 personal best. And Theo Richmond still hammering away on that block as the time continues running for him. And he drops it at 42.27. So a couple of personal bests and a nice showing for both of these gentlemen, Theo Richmond, giving us an example and uh, a view of what might be coming down the road from his skill level. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Both cuts are good. So Joe Grice setting down a real marker. He got the full 11 points in the first round, the stock saw, and he's just added a personal best in a time of 32.58. A come and get me plea to the rest of the pack. And this is one of the reasons here as well, if you watch how these guys are throwing the drivers into the block for these cuts, they need to be at exactly the right angle. Uh, and if the angle is too sharp, then the ax could fly off. And if you're not in control of that ax handle, it might be uh, a throwing competition and not a cutting competition, which is not what we want here. And uh, Grice just, wow, look at that thing spin as he put power through that final driver. Joe Grice with a great time of 32.56. And uh, as I was saying, this is one of the reasons why we have four athletes not in the mix in our standing block because those angles need to be just right for the cuts. They need to come from down low for the two first two drivers. 
and then the next two drivers from on top. And if you just skip a little bit and you don't have control of the axe, it's a very dangerous situation. So these athletes will go through the underhand chop training first to make sure that they're targeting with the axe is correct. And then they'll be able to move to those blocks on the standing block and practice there in situations and be tested and checked and mentored to make sure that when it is time, they can go up on stage and cut properly and safely. Yeah, so the technique is all important, but the quality of the wood is paramount as well. Very. And the wood this season particularly has been excellent. Let's see how our premium wood is managed. Steel Timber Sports is an international extreme sports competition series featuring six disciplines. Three chopping and three sawing. We have a premier competition, we need premier wood. The biggest challenges that I face as part of my role is to ensure that our competitions are supplied with the highest quality wood. Each individual tree is examined for its conformation before processing. We need to make it fair for all athletes. So we are selecting different sections of the trees to use for each of our specific disciplines. Once the trees are felled, extracted and transported to our facilities, we measure, mark and then cut the wood into sized blocks. We then peel the blocks ready for competition. After careful selection, the blocks then leave our yard and are distributed internationally to our steel timber sports competitions. Troy, it's pretty incredible to see everything that's involved to get the wood to tournament ready stage. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this wood really is the best wood in the world for preparation and it's delivered all over the world for the different chopping and sawing events. So it doesn't get much better or much more fair. Occasionally, we do have a situation where there's a knot in there, but you don't see that until you've already started in the wood. And the guys all receive their wood through a lottery process. So it's not like a piece of wood is handed to a guy. That would make it unfair. It's complete lottery system and uh, it's about as fair as it gets. I mean, there are always going to be misnomers here and there, but that's just the way it is in sport. Yeah. Thanks, Troy. We have the next heat on the horizon. Heat three of the standing block shot. We have Jake Bufton and Luke Bray, brother-in-laws. Interesting. Look at their times though. The tail of the tape, personal best 33.56, 33.13 or 16, excuse me. Um, they couldn't be much more closely matched up and, uh, and that you inform me that their brother-in-laws is now very interesting. On stage with axes. Yeah, I don't know, is that a good thing? Uh, we'll see. So on the left-hand side, stand one, that's uh, Jake Bufton and there you see Luke Bray just uh, getting his final positioning set up. And they can barely be separated by their personal best times. Jake has a PB of 33.56, Luke. His okay. PB, 33-1-6. Athletes, ready. Stand you know, there's gonna be to a little your bit timber. Uh, Step-brotherly competition two, going on here. Three, two, one, then. go. Look at this. These guys are in sync with each other on their drivers. Coming in with those first few hits. Jake Bufton right there in front of you, putting a lot of power into it. Wow, he's quick to the other side of his block. Luke Bray still trying to find his way through the first side. He's got some nice chips coming out of there, decides to go a bit deeper and moves to the other side of his block. Two different angles on that first side. And Jake Buftons is looking like it's getting a bit shaky there. A bit of a sticky axe as he tries to get through that second side. One or two more drivers for Jake should do it. Luke Bray doing a good job to catch up. There's some mighty, uh, mighty big chips flying off of Luke Bray's and he's got it there. Oh my goodness, what a great comeback for Luke Bray, 38-38. And Jake Bufton having trouble on his second side. I thought for sure it was going to go down sooner, but now that I look at that block move, it looks like there's a huge split. Yes, there is. There's a massive split in the block. So what happens there is the whole upper part of the block just moves with each driver. And so that ax isn't actually cutting. It's more like hammering the block. So it's quite an interesting situation. Uh, a bit upsetting as well for Jake Bufton because he was cutting really well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, both girls are good. Oh. 
All right, let's take a look back here. Both of them start really well. There you see Luke, some nice drivers there. Jake just hammering. Now Jake was quick to the other side. I'm curious to know where this split actually occurred in his block. Looking back over to Luke's second side. You can see there's a couple of odd angles on the first side and I think about this driver here is when that block split. Yeah, you can see it started to show a little bit of light of day there. Beautiful final driver from Luke. there that's a tough one that's a tough situation when that splits there it just wiggles back and forth and it doesn't accept the drivers one of those big hits from the axe so it doesn't actually cut all right moving on we have rowan luxton and jack the hammer morris looking to bring it down on the standing block chop jack has been solid this weekend through the shows. He's been helping out a lot with uh, our volunteers when they come up on stage. He's been busy, busy, busy. And uh, it's an opportunity for him to practice and be around the sport as much as possible. And that's something, if you love something, that's gonna be an easy thing to do. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So Rowan Luxton close to you on screen here. Get a big sticky ax on his downward driver. Moves to the downside again. Oh, wow. Jack Morris over to the other side with a quick transition to the second side. This could be a good time for the young man. He is really going for it. Could he have gone over too soon? I don't think so. Jack Morris with an absolutely fantastic 21-82 personal best. Not far off the record by Jordan Moscato from 2018. Rowan Luxton still working on the second side of his block here as he's almost through. He's very close and he's got himself a PB of 39.77. A little bit of peanut butter and jelly in that block. And Rowan Luxton's got himself on the board. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Both counts are good. Jack Morris going at that like scrappy do, making mincemeat out of that <laughs> block. Yeah, absolutely. There was nothing accurate about the, hot, the hits that he was putting in there. Look at that, he even got that ax caught big and deep in the second side, or the first hit there, and he's trying to dig it out. Took him a while. Might have been a half second as uh, he tried to work that out. You can see it's total salad on the first side, and he just said, ah, I'm moving to the other side, and I'm gonna power through it, and that's exactly what he did. Wow, look at that. He just sent that block flying across the deck. Beautiful. Not a care in the world for where it landed, just had one eye on the time. <laughs> and it was a PB for Jack Morris, who gets all 11 points in the standing block shot. Joe Grice, another PB, he gets 10 points. And we saw in that penultimate heat, Luke Bray coming in strongly with nine points. So let's have a look at the overall standings, Troy. So let's have a look at this. Movers oh, and shakers. Joe Grice moving up with 21 points. Nicely done. Luke Bray in second place with 19 points, just one point ahead of Jack Morris. So The champ's on the comeback. Yeah, the champ's on the comeback. He's in the mix at the moment. Theo Richmond, not too far out of position either with two more disciplines still to go. We have the single buck coming up next. So as you saw the way that the, uh, the rankings changed uh, with the points that these guys gather along the way, we'll see more shifting in the rankings as we go along as well. Yeah, now, Troy, we've already talked about how the wood's managed, how it gets to competition, but sustainability is a big, big deal for us here at Steel. Yeah, I mean, we're not just cutting wood down and throwing it away in the garbage. The guys are collecting it, and as we hear in the background, and you might even be able to see in the corner of the screen, there's a crew that's collecting the sawdust, the wood chips, and the blocks that come off the top of the uh, uh, pieces that they're cutting, and they're putting them in a skip, and that all gets transported. There's more information about that that we can pass on to the uh, audience, though, huh? We as Steel Timber Sports pride ourselves that all wood is sustainably grown, harvested and recycled to minimise the overall amount of wood processed. 
Firstly, this poplar wood is grown on certified plantations. Secondly, the white pine for our sawing disciplines is only sourced from certified forest management. After all our steel competitions, all the spent wood is collected and recycled right down to the wood chips and sawdust, which for example, is converted into renewable energy in the form of wood pellets for biomass. We quest to find certified partners. This ensures that all newly planted trees are nurtured and managed, promoting maximum efficiency and sustainability for the future conservation of our valuable forests. Therefore, as you can see, with good harvesting practices and good management with silver culture, the ground is quickly replaced by new trees or could even be used for arable for farmers and future rotations. Okay, we're increasing the steel equipment by size quite markedly <laughs> yes. now. Out comes the two metre long single buck. And I had nightmares about this thing last night because you and I went head to head on that very stage we yesterday. We did, and there's a reason why they call it the misery whip, and we both found out why it's yeah. called the misery whip yesterday. Let's take a look at the tool and discipline coming up next. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. This is the single book start list. Heat one, Lorcan O'Byrne will go up on his own. And then heat two, we see Jake Bufton, Luke Bray at it again. And then we have for subsequent heats with a world record to think about as well, Troy, 9.01. That's a massively fast world record and I'm really questioning if that's even possible given that we're cutting yeah. through it in 45 <laughs> seconds. I, I'd, be, I'd be still there tonight if I had another go at that thing. All okay. right, so Lorcan O. Bien up on stage alone and you can see him now just getting his single buck saw and placing it. Now you see that metal piece in the hand of Bart Janssen, that is to determine a safe starting and fair starting depth for the initial cut. Uh, they do this so that the guys don't have to stress about starting the saw on a rounded edge which could cause it to skip off the block or not have a straight beginning cut. And so now Okay, I was going to say we might see our first push through starter, but no, he's repositioning the saw in order to make sure that he's got it ready for a pull. As Lorcan gets ready to go for single buck, the misery whip. Here we go. Okay. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, the key here is to get that saw going and keep it moving. So big angle changes will hook up those 10 centimeter long teeth into the wood and slow and stop that saw, which is very difficult to restart. As you see from Lorcan struggling to keep that saw going, it's a bit like a dance. And you can also see from that one visual there that the angle of his saw is angled inward. So that's going to make it even more difficult as he's created a wedge instead of a straight line cut, but he's got himself a personal best of 2631. Hey, I would be happy to have 30 seconds, quite honestly. And the time's all the more impressive considering there was a few stoppages in there, a few, few knots for Lorcan. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good, good. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because 
He did have quite a few hookups, but he didn't really stop the saw full stop. And we'll watch again. There was one, and that was right at the very beginning. Not unusual for this particular discipline, especially with inexperienced competitors with the single buck in hand. Uh, but you did notice that he did have a really efficient cut stride when he was moving the saw, so I imagine he could probably cut five or six more seconds off of his cut easily if he just has a nice, clean, straight line cut. And that was a bit of a risky moment right at the end, and he's actually, I think, a bit lucky that it was thicker at the bottom that he wasn't left with any material at the bottom that he needed to cut off extra. So it was a good job. He's got a time on the board and a personal best as our next two athletes are ready. And those athletes are Jake Bufton and Luke Bray. So the brothers-in-law again on stage together. So last adjustment for the saw for Jake Bufton, Luke Bray waiting to set his. And now that uh, Bart Janssen is over there, he can place his saw, make sure the alignment is clean. Luke was our bronze medalist last year. He's currently lying in second place. So we'll be hopeful of another podium finish this year. So he'll gingerly move that saw over without making any additional cuts. And we get ready for heat number two in single buck. Okay, athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So two completely different styles to start things off with. Luke Bray opting for a longer pull-up. Jake Bufton pretty much in the middle of the saw to get things started, but both of them are cutting very well. It's a nice thin cookie for Jake Bufton. Luke Bray looking like he's got a lot into it. He's got a bit of an angle on his cookie as well. Personal best for Luke Bray and a personal best for Jake Bufton. These two guys are like exact twins at this moment, it seems like. 17 and change for both of them and personal bests for both of them as well. So I wonder if they're training together a lot. They must. I only hope it looked like there was a bit of a twist off by Luke at the end. I hope okay, it doesn't hinder him. Congratulations, both cuts are good. All right, so we've got two good cuts there. I kind of thought there might have been a twist off and a break and he had to go back and cut some more off, but it didn't seem that way. So he got the uh, thumbs up from Bart. And here we go, you can see how they started off, both of them getting that moving quite well. And here we see that rocking motion that causes the problems. You want to make sure it stays flat and clean through the cut. The shape of the saw itself will do the work. You just have to be confident enough and clean enough with the cuts. The bottom was beautiful cuts for both of these guys. Look how close that was. The, oh, there was where that little twist for Luke could have caused some problems, but again, it was a thicker bottom end, and it uh, saved his bacon, I think. Okay, heat three, Max Wright and Memphis Clements. See Max on screen now from Petersfield, Hampshire. He's a forester by trade, bit of an all-rounder. Loves climbing, hiking, classic cars. And this is Memphis from Knighton in Wales. Such a strong tradition in Knighton with the saws and the axes. So we're look, expecting big things. All right, this will be now, I'm positive, okay. our first push start of the day. Absolutely. With Memphis Ready. opting to push Stand the saw through to instead your of timber. Pulling. Three, two, one, go! A oh, little pullback and he got it going. So choppy start for, for Memphis, but he's got the saw moving and now he's starting to use the length of that saw a little bit better. It's a very thin cookie though. He's got problems right there. 
So he's got to replace that saw and cut. Now that's a terrible spot for that to happen because he's got to restart the saw on a super razor thin edge. Max Wright struggling to get through there. Memphis looking like he's done a good job to restart that, but he's got such a oh. thin piece, it just keeps breaking off. And this is another reason why they call it the misery whip, because when that saw bends a little bit, it really causes problems. Max Wright with a personal best 3107, and there's just not enough material left for Memphis Clements to continue the cut. So that's going to be a DQ timeout for him, unfortunately. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one, it's good. Stand two, unfortunately, DQ, a complete this. That's a heartbreaker for Memphis. Yeah, it really is, because he was looking very good off the start, but he just set the saw a bit too thin towards the side. And uh, because of the, I mean, he's an active cutter. He's a very active cutter. So all those twists and, and bows of the saw cause problems. Max clean, but right here you can see Every time, it was just wiggling a bit, and you could see the face. Oh, he just knew it right away. Next time you know, he's going to set that deeper in. He'll take a wider cookie just to make sure that that doesn't happen to him again. And this is the situation. It's live and learn. And he actually did restart it nicely, but then he just ran out of material, basically, is what happened to him. And Max struggled a little bit at the bottom, but he got himself a good cookie on the deck and some points in his coffers. Okay, heat four in the single buckets. Don Bell and Joe Grice. Don Bell, strong kid. Looking forward to see him hit the underhand. Both these boys, much like our rookie athletes, they've got support in the crowd. People have traveled, friends and family have come to cheer them on. So there's a, a nice little rule of thumb. The width of the measurement device that Bart uses is a very good width to start with for your cut. Okay. At this, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, heavy hookup on the pull through by Joe Grice. Dominic Bell also struggling a little bit there as that saw hop some, but Joe Grice has got the flow going now. He's got the rhythm and, oh, you can see there's that angle from Dominic Bell. So he's going inwards on the cut. Joe Grice has got himself a personal best of 18.63. Dominic Bell will get that as well. He just needs to have a clean cookie on the deck and that's a 28.62 for Dom Bell. Well done. All right, a good cut there by Joe Grice puts him solidly in third place in the single buck with two more heats to come. And at the moment, that means he tops the leaderboard in the overall standings with 30 points. But we still do have Theo Richmond and okay, Zach Powell gentlemen. coming up. Both cuts are good. And we have the thumbs up for two good cuts. And that means with two more heats to go, there could still be some shifting going on with Zach Powell, Rowan Luxton, Jack Morris, and Theo Richmond still to cut. You can see here right off the hop, Joe Grice struggled to get that first pull. It just hooked up a bit too much, but then when he got that saw moving, the flow was there. It wasn't all that bad. One small stoppage for him, but otherwise he looked pretty clean through the whole cut. Max Wright, excuse me. Dominic Bell also just at the bottom, having trouble keeping the saw moving. And there you can see a couple of small hookups, but then he did get it through. And both these guys having slight angles on their cuts. But these are things that these guys learn over time. And with experience, they know exactly where they're going with these cuts. Okay, heat five. It's Theo Richmond, 21 years old, and the 22-year-old Zach Powell. Zach Powell, why so serious? <laughs> you 
Interesting. Theo just seems to be relaxed. I don't know. He just uh, completely at ease on stage. No stress at all. Now Zach's got a very thin start there. Yes. So he's got to be careful. We saw him cut the other day on single, so I mean, we know he's got the skills there. Hopefully, he can keep that saw in line and keep it nice and clean and have no breakaways. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Good start by Zach Powell. Full length cuts to get things going. Theo Richmond started with one or two short cuts and then really got that saw moving. That's a lovely cut from Zach Powell and it's a national record at 12.54. Theo Richmond not that far back but he's got a tab left and this is what I was talking about with those thin cookies. You gotta get in there and cut that off for it to be a fair cut. And that means the time's going to keep running for Theo. That's Aww. troublesome. He could do it, though. He's just got to make sure that last little bit of wood is gone to make sure it's fair. This is the wrestling match that has to happen, though, if you want to have the points. And look at this. He's getting Come right on, down and dirty to get it done, and he's got it done. Oh, my God. What a fight at the end. But Zach Powell with an absolutely incredible cut and a national record for the rookies with 12.42. Let's see what Bart Janssen makes of this. Oh, they're going to DQ him after all by the looks of it. Let's see. Maybe they're going to come up and... I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, stand one. Unfortunately, DQ was not straight. They cut out. But, however, stand two. Very good cut. Oh, that's a heartbreaker for Theo Richmond, especially seeing as he came back in there and worked so hard to cut that little tab off. You are allowed to do that, but it has to be done quickly and cleanly. Let's take a look back here, and uh, we saw Zach starting off just going knuckles to tip on that saw, really using the entire length, beautiful flow. He had the rhythm, he was dancing with that saw. Theo, same thing, he had fantastic rhythm. He was really good, he looked fantastic right down to the bottom. And it was just at the bottom of his cut that it broke away, and it broke away in a terrible spot. Right here. A little bit of a twist, and oh. there it goes. And then he gets in there and he just fight for it, fight for it, fight for it. He just didn't, it's almost like he was sanding it off. Too bad, Poor too guy. bad. Poor guy. Uh, heat six, Rowan Luxton against our reigning champ, Jack Morris. Who held previously the national record, so you know that Jack's gonna be on fire for this one to try and get that back from Zach Powell. So he's gotta aim for 12.42 or better in order to uh, push Zach Powell down. So Rowan Luxton right there, saw his set, and Zach Morris, who was uh, my helper the other day, has his saw set as well. Okay, athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, Jack on it right away with a beautiful start. Rowan Luxon looking good as well as he gets into the wood quickly. You can see the concentration, a bit of a stick there, but Jack Morris has got a wheel. Oh no, a little cooker at the bottom and he's got a personal best there. And a 13.53, I don't know if we can call that. Yeah, that's a personal best, but it's not quite the national record. 13.53, great job. He was faster than previously. And Rowan Luxton's got himself a 24.03 personal best as well. What a great start by Jack Morris. And it was just at the bottom when he angled up a bit too high and got it hooked up. And it was a nice cut. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both cuts are good. All right, so we are through three disciplines now. We will be heading over to our fourth and final discipline sh shortly, excuse me. And look at this, just a great start by Morris as he started that saw, full length cuts. 
Rowan, a bit of a sticky start, but then he got the saw moving and he looked really good. And right here comes the hookup. Oh, just a troublesome stop right there. Probably could have shaved off a few tenths of a second had it not happened and been nice and clean. And Rowan, there's that angle again, playing games with the guys at the bottom of the cut. But he's got himself a personal best and he is lined up. So let's take a look at the ranks. Yes. Zach Powell taking all 11 points available to him with a new national record, 12.42. Jack Morris firmly back in the reckoning with 10 points there. And Luke Bray, a solid, solid nine points to put him in third position. Now let's have a look at how that affects our overall standings. Look at that, could the top not, three. Holy it smokes, could not folks. not be any closer. Oh my goodness. Three athletes on 28 points. And Zach Powell, 22 points, and still the underhand chop to come. So there are points to be had in the underhand chop, and there could be a complete switching around of the ranks after the underhand. All right, that is the end of the single book, but let's get some more axes out for our underhand chop. You're going to see athletes jump on the wood, go hammer and tongs at it, but watch your feet. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an ax to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. Okay, underhand chop, here it comes. Six heats, these are your athletes, they are pretty much ready to go backstage making their final preparations troy the championship is on the line well this is really it i mean this is the last chance for these guys to make uh the points up and uh, maybe make some moves uh, you never know what can happen some guys can have a bad cut they could have a bad block they could have an uninteresting block where there's a knot inside that slows them down so right now in the overall standings there's three guys at the top with 28 points each there is an opportunity for any of the top five to really jump into the number one spot with excellent underhand chop. All right, and there you can see our stage set up with our four underhand chop blocks. Now, it's maybe a bit difficult to see from that angle, but there are footholds cut into the block where the athletes can stand on. You can try and imagine standing on a rounded surface and having to control that ax and your position on the block. And there you can see a beautiful shot by our cameraman, Max, on stage as uh, he shows us what that block looks like. And you can also see the markings on the block at the footholds now. These guys have to learn how to cut really accurately in this discipline because if they cut into the footholds, it counts as a DQ. If they cut through, but even just a thread of that block is left remaining, it counts as a DQ. So there are a lot of things that are happening here on these blocks in order to make sure that these guys are really, really on point and one of the reasons why they have those markings there and, and you see the footholds is if they do cut into the footholds it's considered a safety error and so that's one of the reasons why they dq they also do wear chainmail socks under their soft-soled shoes so that if something untowards happens it'll hit the foot you know and won't cut so badly so that's one of the reasons there there's tons of things going on okay Troy, we've seen some great improvements from all our athletes across yeah. the course of this championships how impressed have you been? Oh my goodness, I mean, you know, first of all, from day one to today, it's been just amazing action. 
uh, all of the demos, the pros on stage, national records, personal best falling left, right, and center. An incredible showing with the women earlier today. And now the same situation with our rookies. You know the future is bright for Steel Timber Sports in Great Britain because we have such a crop of talented people coming through the system and moving up into the competition ranks. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this all develops. Now, it looks like our first athlete that was supposed to come out uh, was not where he was supposed to be. So we're going to jump straight to heat number two, not to confuse you guys out there. It's going to be Zach Powell going up against Jake Bufton. Okay. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Zach Powell opting to face the audience to start things off. And wow, he's got a quick hacks. He is working it very fast. Jake Bufton on the other side, throwing power into it. But Zach Powell is just chipping away like mad. We should see him switching to the other side quickly. And there he is already on the other side. We may see a fantastic time from Zach Powell today as he is all over this underhand chop. Jake Bufton moving over to the other side of his block now. Zach Powell just going through. It's starting to split. He's almost there. A couple more drivers and he should be through. Oh, that's a difficult spot right now. Clear some of that wood out of the way and he is almost through. He's got to have it clean. And there you go. 36-27 for Zach Powell with a personal best. Jake Bufton just passing the 42 second mark. He's got a tough second side there. Really nice clean first side and you can hear that ax whistling through the air as he's got it done in 50.15. Wow, I am impressed by Zach Powell and that underhand chop. I mean, that was quick to start. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, both girls are good. Now that is a personal best for Zach Powell. You, sure, you saw him shake his head, Troy. He could have shaved a few more seconds off. You could see the, the disappointment. Yeah, I mean, these guys are battlers. They're fighters. They're, they're aiming for the best possible option out there. And I mean, to me, uh, that was a great cut from Zach Powell. He was fast. He was quick with the axe frequency in the drivers. And he had good clean cuts. He was quick to the other side. He's got himself a personal best. You know there's going to be improvement as they go along. Uh, it looked really good from when him. It was just the last couple of drivers there where he thought he might have been able to just go straight through, but it just didn't happen. There was just something hanging on for dear life. And there you can see a little bit of a sticky axe as he finally makes that swing through, kicks the block over for safety. And yeah, it was a nice run for Zach. You can see some very, very nice accurate cuts there for Jake as well. And the, the sides of the cuts were super smooth, so he was super accurate, missing a bit of the power perhaps. And uh, on that second side, I think he might have been a bit tired, getting a bit of salad in there, but he did get through in a time of 50. Uh, now they've adjusted, excuse me, 49.90, so it's okay. Yeah, don't think many of our athletes are thinking about salad. <laughs> no, no, not big, the... big boys, big girls. Listen, we've had some incredible action over the course, the course of this weekend from our rookies this afternoon, our history makers, our women this morning, and of course, our pro male athletes. Let's take a look at how the men got on yesterday. I've been training really hard this year. I want to... Uh come back and retain my title from last year. But I know the likes of Graham and Rob Chatley coming back into it are going to be hot on my heels. Well, last year I finished second. I was pleased with the result, but this year I'm hoping to go one better. <laughs> so the British Championships is six disciplines. It starts off with the underhand, the stock saw and the standing block. And at that point, four people get knocked out. From there, eight people move through to the next round, the single block and springboard and then there's six then go through to the hot sock. It's all about the hot sock. I'm friends with everyone in the competition, but friendship's got to be pushed to one side for the championships because I really want to get that title back. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Great British Steel GB Pro Championship. Rob Chatley was the British champion in 2014. Will he be the comeback king? Glenn Penlington and Graham Turner, first and second place respectively last year. These two guys are going to be going hard to try and take that top spot of the podium. Unbelievable, that's a new national record right there. This competition is really hotting up. 
Oh, it's got to be careful here. We're getting close to the cutoff time. That is a phenomenal performance. And it all comes down to this very moment. Our 2023 champion, once again, Mr. Black Pellington. You know, being able to win it two years in a row, you know, having that confidence to come back and do it again, it's a fantastic feeling. I'm sure we'll have a few beers tonight and a little bit of a party. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Yes, we are joined right now by our great British champion, Glenn Penlington. Glenn, we hope the champagne's dried off your clothes today. Um, talk us through your experiences in retaining that title. Yeah, it was great to uh, come back and retain that title. You know, the pressure is on. Um, it was a real close contest. You know, I had Rob and uh, Graham behind me trying to push me all the way. So, yeah, but it was good to retain again. And you left it till that sixth discipline, the hot saw. You gave us all a bit of a scare, though, but your eyes cool. Yeah, it took a bit to start. It took, I think I pulled it five times, so I give my mum a bit of a worry, as I always do with the hot saw. But yeah, got it started in the end, kept my head, and uh, managed to get a PB as well, so I was happy with that. Yeah, not only are you a very worthy champ, but you are a mentor, a tutor to some of our rookies as well. Just talk us through like the advice and the, the knowledge you impart on those guys. Yeah, it's always good to give back and help out these young lads, and uh, it's great to see. It's a close competition out there. You know, there's three of them on the on level points, so it's going to come right down to the wire to this last event. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good one to watch the finale. Yeah, and what's on the horizon for you now for the rest of the year? Hopefully I can get an individual spot at the World Championships in Stuttgart. If not, I'll be pushing for that team. Uh, we had a real good result last year, so we'll be pushing to get up there higher. And, um, yeah, hopefully the European trophy as well. I love how you say young lads. You're still a young lad yourself. I mean, you know, it's an open future for you in timber sports. And if we do see you, uh, your aim is obviously to be the world champion and, uh, at some point in the future. What's it going to take for you to get there? Because there's still some work to do. You guys are definitely on point here. But uh, where are your training regimes going from here? And, and uh, what's next in that respect? I think, yeah, just keep working hard and, um, you know, maybe travel more competitions. I think the more work we can do, um, a lot of traveling into Europe this last year, just more training, just work harder than ever and try and get closer to the top. We're crossing our fingers for you, absolutely. Thanks very much for talking to us. Glenn Penlington, our reigning 2023 British Pro Champion. Uh, next up, Troy, the events just keep coming thick and fast. We are up to date with Heat 3 in the underhand shot, which sees Memphis Clements going head to head with Max Wright. All right, the guy's coming out on the stage now. Always curious to see how these athletes are going to do when they come out. Memphis Clements. He's obviously uh, injured his hand at some point. It's quite well wrapped up. Hopefully that doesn't affect his performance at all. Max Wright. Getting ready to go, and okay. here we go. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Pretty well in sync with each other. Power drivers going into the blocks. Memphis Clements getting some nice chips out of there. Max still waiting to get the first couple out of his. There's one hang in there. Not nice to see those chips hanging in the way. That just tends to get in the way. But Max has got some nice clean sides. So clean and accurate is fast. And that's what we want to see. Memphis Clements getting a pretty narrow first cut there, so he'll try and go wide on the second side as he moves over there now. Max Wright going a bit deeper on the first side, and he should switch over to the second side fairly soon. Oh! Memphis got a bit of a skip. We don't see that very often with the underhand chop as he's just putting everything he possibly can into those drivers. Max moved over to the other side of his block now. As we near the minute mark, they do have to get through within a certain amount of time. And Max, or uh, Memphis Clements just threw in 55.04, super excited off that block. And he is happy about that. Max Wright's got uh, 20 more seconds to make it through here before the cutoff time. He's getting lots of support from the audience here. It looks like he's getting close, some big chips ready to fall. 
He's got to do it inside of nine seconds now, though. Small adjustments down low to get those pieces gone. And I'm afraid it's not going to happen for him as he's got a time limit exceeded disqualification. But Bart, bless his heart, let him go. And uh, he managed to cut through. So he's got himself a clean cut. Unfortunately, it does have to come with a DQ. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one, it's good. Stand three, unfortunately, DQ, out of time. And you can see Max is winded. That was a very good effort by Max. I mean, his cuts were clean on the first side. So just watching these two guys, two completely different styles. Memphis Clements just going at it with full bluster and power. And, and you can see here, the difference in the cutting style. Very shallow cuts by Memphis here. Max, you could see a little bit wider open cuts. And there's that skip. That's what I'm talking about when those pieces are hanging in the, in the, in the area where you're chopping through that can cause a, an ax skip. You don't see it very often, but it does happen. So this is one of those key reasons why these guys spend a lot of time on the underhand chop and making sure they're really proficient with the ax before they stand up. All right, moving on to our next heat in underhand chop. Dominic Bell and Theo Richmond with two more heats to go in addition to this one. Again, Theo coming onto the stage looking incredibly relaxed and calm. Curious about how Dominic's gonna cut here today. You can see he's wrapped his hands in grip tape. So it's like a medical tape, but it's got a bit of a grippy surface to it. So that can have two effects. It can offer you better grip on the handle. Yes, of course, but it can also prevent okay. you from slipping your hands and uh, feathering ready. them on Stand the axe handle your timber. for your drivers Three, and your lifts. Three, two, one, go. Doesn't seem to bother. Dominic at all. Theo Richmond starting well on his side as both of these guys get into the first sides of their block. There we see Theo Richmond's cuts. Very, very nice. Pretty decent for accuracy. Dominic Bell and our cameraman making us super dizzy over here with those follow shots. Theo Richmond moving over to the second side of his block now. A bit of a gingerly step around, but he's got his work cut out for him on the second side. There's still a little bit of slough left in on the first side. Shouldn't hinder him too much. And now Dominic Bell moved over to the other side of his block as we get to the 45 second mark in the heat. We should have times for both of these guys if they continue to hit this well. The power is there, but the fatigue is also setting in. So you gotta be really wary of what's happening on the block. And now you can see Theo's getting through. One more driver should do it. And Theo Richmond's got himself a PB of 103.06. Dominic Scott now just 11 seconds to get through that block. He should be able to do it. He's coming pretty close as the people in the audience here are starting to provide him with a little bit of support. One, two more drivers hopefully will do it. Seven seconds to go. Oh no, another DQ for time limit exceeded for Dominic Bell and this time just didn't cut through all the way. He was so close though. Now Bart will put the puzzle back together to make sure the cuts are clean. We should be quite okay on this one in my opinion, but Bart wants to make sure and be absolutely safe with his final call on these cuts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand two, unfortunately DQ out of time. However, stand four is good. You can see both these guys getting right into it on the first side of their block. Good clean cuts there, and a big chip coming off on this one for Theo. You can see right there, massive pieces coming off. Dominic 
Bit of a shallower starting cut. And here's the final couple drivers for Theo. He did have it split, but he just wanted to be sure, which is, you know, safe to get through. But you also have to make sure that when you do do that final driver, you make sure you keep in control of that axe. Nice finish, though, for Theo Richmond. Good job. And the champions just keep on coming to this stage. I'm delighted to welcome on our women's champion, Justine Narusa. Thanks for joining us, Justine. Congratulations, first and foremost, on an incredible performance this morning on that very stage. Now, it's only out of our second ever women's championships. Do you and the rest of the women backstage, do you get a sense that you're making history? Thank you, first of all. Uh, yeah, it's been an amazing day. I um, absolutely love it. The crowd is amazing. The ladies, um, obviously, my best friends, and obviously competing alongside. Oh, it's been fantastic. And yeah, the ladies of GB are making history. So slowly moving into Europe and showing the world what we're uh, made of. Yeah, long may it continue. Now, you were well in contention in last year's event, the first ever Women's Championships here in Britain. Um, did you do anything differently this time around? And if so, what? Uh, yes. So obviously I was just introduced to this sport only last year. So I'm very new to this. Um, wow. So obviously this year uh, I have more opportunities to take part in small agriculture shows with the chops and obviously uh, training alongside with my ladies and obviously training back at home as well with my coach um, and just doing, you know, exercises beside that as well. Just keeping fit, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we know anyone can get involved in timber sports. We saw Libby Arrowsmith, 16 year old, taking part this morning and a mum, Martine, also <laughs> in the mix. What's your advice to any young girls and women who want to take part in timber sports? How do they get involved? Uh, just get in touch as well. Obviously, uh, social media, most people are on Instagram or Facebook and, you know, just put in the search. Uh, still GB, Timber Sports, YouTube or anything like that. It's easy to find. Just get in touch and we'll point in the right direction. You guys, you actually cut three national records before Libby got on stage for that underhand shot. And I saw you guys sitting backstage afterwards, uh, sitting together. Uh, I mean, obviously there's no bad blood, but you must have kind of gone, ah, oh, you dumb kid. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you guys did really well out there. What it, does it feel like for you to know that you had three national records in the competition this weekend? Obviously it felt amazing, uh, but fair play to Libby. She's only 16, so... I take my hat off her and absolutely amazing and she did great and I'm absolutely proud of her as well and when we've been training and everything we've been pushing each other and supporting and I can't say anything less than that and so I'm just very pleased but just watch out Libby. <laughs> <laughs> well it's an incredible group of women that competed today and congratulations to you all especially to you for Thank you. taking Thank the you. title this year. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank congratulations you so much. Justine, all the best. So we heard from our champion there, Justine Narusa. We are back underway with our rookie championship, the culmination now, the penultimate heat in this final discipline, the underhand chop. And we have Joe Grise and Luke Bray, both knocking on the door of the championship title. Yeah, Joe Grise just sitting in third place, Luke Bray in fourth place. So there's a good opportunity here if they can get some good points on the board to move up that ranking significantly. Again, the, the guys are allowed to bring out two axes and one as a backup. If, uh, if an axe breaks or if it, uh, it's not cutting the way they want it to cut, they can switch. That will take time. Luke Bray on your stage right and Joe Grise on stage left. As we take a look from the stage out to our audience. Another nice day. The rain has okay. held off here. The weather's been just perfect for action Athlete, today. Here ready. we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Good start by Joe Grice, quick with that axe. There's that piece hanging in the way, now two pieces, but he's knocked them down nicely. Luke Bray getting into it as well. Wow, look how deep he is on that first side. He should be switching over any second now. There he goes. Luke looking very good as Joe Grice comes around to the second side. Joe Grice spent a bit more time on the first side, but I imagine that Luke Bray is gonna be through there any time now. Joe Grice pushing him hard though. Oh, it's done it. Personal best, 35-45 for Luke Bray. Good job. 
He's going to be happy about that. Joe Grice steps down. One last driver. Safely done. And it's a 39.70 for him. Shaking his head at that, though. And I think he lost just a second or two as he had to step down and step back up. And they've readjusted the time now to 41.96. We should point out that these times are all unofficial until they are made official by our Competition Control Center and by... Bart Janssen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Both kills are good. Now, there was a brief moment where I saw Bart looking at the foothold of Joe Grise, uh, his block. Uh, and uh, the reason for that is what we talked about off the top with this particular discipline is cutting into the foothold. But he was just that close to the line and not over it, so he was safe. And this is why we had two good cuts on this one. And we have times in there, Luke Bry with a beautiful time of 35.20 seconds, personal best. That puts him atop the leaderboard for underhand chop and consequently on top of the overall standings, just ahead of Joe Grise, who moves up into second place, 39 and 37 points respectively. But we still do have Rowan Luxton and Jack Morris to cut in the last heat of the day as we take a look at the final slow-mos and maybe we get a shot of Joe Grise stepping down and then stepping back up. There you can see the block split for Luke. Nicely done. Okay, we're not going to get that uh, last picture that I wanted, but that's okay. And this is the final heat of the day right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, it's on the line. Rowan Luxton, 19 years old, and our reigning champ. He goes into this final discipline. Prior to this, three athletes sat on 28 points. This is the final chance. All right, so Jack Morris still holding on to 28 points, but will cut now. His personal best is in the high 20s, 29 and change. As you see, 29.91. And um, if he can get even close to that, he should retain his title, but okay. he needs to have a good cut here. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So for Jack Morris, it's Luke Bray's time of 35.2 that he needs to beat. Wow, and look at Rowan Luxton go at it. Jack Morris with a serious salad on the first side, and he's just powering through it, Ryan. Rowan Luxton onto the other side trying to keep up with Jack Morris, but Jack Morris looks like he may well have a very good Heim time here today. A swing through and he's got a national record. Oh, Jack wow. Morris takes a 24-6-9 national record in the underhand chop, improving from his previous time, and he has done it again. Unbelievable. Rowan Luxton on his first side was just speed and power. On the second side, struggled a bit. He's got one more, two more drivers, and he is through in a 44.13. That's a personal best for Rowan. Good job. But boy, did he ever look scary on the first side. He was quick with that axe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both girls are good. So it's official, both cuts are good. We'll take a quick look at the slow-mos here as my colleague Alex will make his way over to the main stage for our awards ceremony. But what an effort here. Look at this Rowan, absolutely a speed demon with the ax on that first side. Incredible movement, fantastic accuracy. And then both the guys went over to the other side, as I said, Jack with a bit of a salad on the first side, but he had the power and the motivation to go through that second side. Rowan, the fatigue, sneaking up on him on the second side. And uh, he just was a little bit slower, but he has himself a personal best time. And Jack Morris with an unbelievable 24-38 national record. I mean, we saw Jack in the demonstrations over the weekend, Troy, but he's just a beast when it comes yeah, to competition. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he gets up there, the adrenaline starts to flow, and it's a different animal. So let's take a quick look at the underhand shop results here. Jack Morris clearly on top, taking the full 11 points with a time of 24.38. And uh, <laughs> Luke Bray, a personal best with a 35.20 in second place in the underhand, Zach Powell. And 
a nice time of 35.83. Let's take a look at how that changes in the overall standings. We'll see some movement, but we know that one man's going to be staying on top, and that is Jack Morris defending his title as the rookie champion here for the British Rookie Championship 2023. Luke Bray slips into second place there. Joe Grees. Joe Grees, excuse me, in second place. Uh, third place, uh, Zach Powell in fourth, and Rowan Luxton rounding out the top five. That was a beautiful final cut from Rowan Luxton, and uh, we'll head over to the stage in just a moment for our awards ceremony. But I got to say, we've seen some fantastic talent on stage here this weekend with our pros, of course, with the women, and today in the afternoon now with the rookies. And uh, if you want to get involved in the conversation, put your two cents in. We do have a couple of hashtags. There is one called hashtag kiss my axe. No, I didn't mispronounce that. And the other one is hashtag steel timber sports. If you want to get involved in the conversation, put your two cents in, congratulate an athlete, ask how you can get into the sport, etc., etc., etc. We do have social media channels out there. And uh, we're going to head up to the stage in just a couple of seconds here. But one final note here is that the state of steel timber sports in Britain is clearly on a nice upswing with the talent that we've seen here today and the fantastic champions that we have in this country. I'm looking forward to seeing where things go for Great Britain down the road. Ah, and let's not forget, next weekend in France, we have the French National Championship where we will be live streaming as well. So make sure you tune in to see how our French colleagues are doing. And there was a great rivalry between France and Great, or France and great Britain last year at the World Championships. Will that be reborn in the team competition when we head to Stuttgart later this year? Let's wait and see. All right, let's head up to the main stage now for our award ceremony and over to Alex. Thank you so much, Troy, and thank you everyone here in Malvern, Worcestershire for a fantastic support of our rookie athletes today. And we're about ready to bring them back on for one final time as we congratulate each and every one of them. Let's give it up for them. Starting with Lorcan O'Byrne, Dominic Bell, Memphis Clements, Max Wright, Jake Bufton, Theo Richmond, Rowan Luxton, and Zach Powell. Okay, take a bow, gentlemen. You deserve it. Congratulations to you all. Superb sport we've seen here this afternoon. And like Troy says, the only way is up now. Here we are with our podium finishers for our Rookie Championships 2023. In third place, give it up for Joe Grice. This went right to the wire today. Our 2023 runner-up, give it your best for Luke Bray. And the top spot, the winner, the champion for 2023, Jack the Hammer Morris. Sounds like a wrestling name. And presenting the champagne from head office is Simon Hewitt, head of marketing for Steel GB. Once again, there's our champ, our rookie champion of 2023, Jack Morris. Congratulations once again. Yes, Jack. Jack, just before you go, Jack, come back here, mate. This is the bit. I know you don't like this bit. So come out front. Let's, let's make a fuss of you, mate. Um, 
first question for you, as well as I'm going to say congratulations to you. What happens to you in competition mode? Because you just, a, a switch seems to get flicked and you just go into overdrive. I just love it. We're in front of the crowd, it just gets me going. From discipline to discipline, I think I just get better. And we saw a bit of emotion there right at the end as you finished that event. Was the realisation that you'd done it and, uh, you know, superb time, but everything you put, all the hard work, it's all come together for you today. Yeah, this one probably means more than the first one. It's been a hard couple of weeks mentally, and a lot of work has gone into this. Yeah, now, I know you're all great mates backstage, a great camaraderie there, but they're going to be hot on your tail now for uh, the future championships. Um, talk us through what the atmosphere is like backstage and the, uh, the learning curve that you all go through. Yeah, they didn't make it easy. The camps this year have been really good, learned a lot, and these guys are really pushing me all the way. When can we see you on a pro stage? What, is that the next thing for you? Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to see. Listen, we'll let you have a really nice Sunday now as the champ with that medal proudly round your neck, stinking of champagne. That's the way you want it to be. Congratulations once again for our champion, Jack Morris. And just to uh, put the rubber stamp on a great days and a great weekend's competition here, Troy Mannering, it's over to you. Thanks so much, Alex. It has been a fantastic weekend of competition. We've had umpteen national records broken this weekend. We've seen a ton of personal bests go down the tubes. I mean, it's been amazing. The wood has been good. The action has been better. The weather has been hot. It is more or less the perfect steel timber sports weekend here in Great Britain in Malvern. And I have enjoyed every single second of it. We hope you guys have too. Don't forget to tune in next week for the French Nationals. Alex, thank you very much for being here. Everybody out there, take care and have a good one. Till next time, ciao. Bye-bye.